Hey guys, and welcome to an absolute nail-biter game between myself, a rubber duck of war, leading the best of the elves, the wood elves, up against the Bretonian forces, and we're actually playing up against a Chinese player here today, so unfortunately his name isn't displayed because the um, Chinese alphabet for some reason doesn't kind of convey over to Total War Warhammer super well, and this is Wood Elves versus Bretonia. Historically, one of the worst matchups in the entire game for the Wood Elves, but it has changed considerably over the years, particularly with the DLC to the Wood Elves, and it is far more balanced than it ever was before. Still pretty terrible for the Wood Elves, but nowhere near as bad as the nigh-on impossible tasks you had, where you had to whip out to levels of micro in attempting to seal victory. So instead, we've gone for a pretty fun build. We have a load of Eternal Guard in a defensive formation, taking the high ground, trying to make Obi-Wan Kenobi as proud as possible. And they're backed up by the Loix Tricksters, the regiment around war dancers who have some of the coolest models in the game. They will flip, do cartwheels, and slaughter your enemies for you all at the same time whilst laughing manically into the long night. We do have triple glade riders as well with Hagbane tips. These guys actually have a surprising amount of armor piercing on their long range missile pressure and should be able to pick apart some of the knights. And also my main goal here, having them on the left hand side, is to try to infiltrate into that peasant bowman line, which I'm certainly expecting. Up in the sky, we do have a Spell Singer of Life on a Great Eagle, coming in with Dwellers Below, an ability, or an item, I should say, not an item, a spell, there you go, a spell, I should say, that has become far more meta than it ever has before. The Dwellers Below can do some really good damage, it slows down the enemy, likewise as a bucket ton of damage, very good up against enemy cavalry models. We also have Earth Blood, a Power Stone, and Opal Amulet. Up in the sky, we also have a Glade Captain, rolling dirty alongside the Sisters of Twilight. This was just in case the opponent brought the King up in the sky. We have three single entities to duel him, and today the Sisters of Twilight will be on top of their Mighty Dragon. I've spoken about the Sisters quite a bit before in the past and said they're normally, 9 times out of 10, better on their Eagle, but this time we're bringing the big beastie, the Dragon himself. Not only does he look incredibly badass, so do the Sisters surfboarding the Dragon's head to victory or defeat. Either way, they're going to look cool doing it. Now the Sister Twilight are probably the most obnoxiously annoying lord in the game for the Wood Elves. They've got the Glade Lady as well who can be a pain in the butt with her nets but the Sisters of Twilight floating in, shooting down your castles and characters can be a massive pain. If you've not prepared for them they can really reap a bloody toll but on the other side of the battlefield is also another super annoying obnoxious lord in the form of the Fey Enchantress bringing her bros the double paladins who will be here to protect her today. It looks like they are uh, both, I oh, know one of them does indeed come with Guardian, the other one doesn't. Fey Enchantress has Flesh to Stone and Earth Blood, Chalice of Potions, Favor of the Fey, all that good stuff. But she's really here, apart from her healing, for that drain effect, which can be quite powerful. So it shall be the battle of the two obnoxious lords. For the front, we have a bucket ton of peasant mobs here to absorb enemy missile pressure. Take the charge, swarm the back lines, all that good stuff. We do have the Wardens of Montfort here on the right-hand side. Mounted Yeoman Archer Regiment of Renown Unit. They're kind of getting bullied by the sheer mass of arrows coming towards them by the Glade Riders. For the main battle line, we do have some Spimmer Arms dotted around. So relatively cheap ground force. And that is because we have a huge amount of cavalry, which is really a good way of playing this for Bretonnia. We have Knights of the Realm, Knights of the Realm. Yes, you guessed it. More Knights of the Realm, more Knights of the Realm, and even more... Oh no, Grail Knights. Okay. We have one special elite unit of ground knights on the right hand side. We do have a couple of units of peasant bowmen as well, bringing those fight arrows just to try and pick apart some of our larger creatures if the knights do struggle a little bit and the battle is underway. So my opponent is going to be trying to fall back at the moment and redeploy. He actually wants to go through the forest, it would seem, to try to avoid some of the long-range missile pressure we will be bringing. But I'm quite happy to just reorganise my troops up here on the high ground. We're going to be rotating around to meet him, always ensuring that we keep the high ground where possible, because it's going to be a big advantage. Cavalry charging uphill is going to be a lot less effective than a thunderous downhill charge. Blade Riders doing a nice little bit of poke damage onto the Warden. It's going to be falling back though. I do want to save my ammunition where possible. Just as I say that the Sisters do waste some shots into the Peasant Mobs. We'll be switching our targets very soon to the Knights of the Realm. And as you can see, we are launching shot after shot in at them. And if we can kill models, that's going to be the uh, kind of aim of the day here. Is to kill as many models as possible. Because then they can't be healed up. They're not undead. Well, we are we've been a little bit wasteful at the moment so far of the sisters ammo as well as the glade captain we will be rectifying that and starting to hunt down the knights and this is certainly the better way to go you can see one knight already dead two knights dead and i'll certainly start to add up 
and the main battle is going to get underway sh relatively shortly with the Bretonian player just doing a slow, steady advance, getting his cavalry ready for a big left-handed flank overload. You can see one, two, three cav units here, the hero core and the lord all on one side. That is going to be a bucket ton of pressure raining in. We're just be trying to shoot in the back of these Knights of the Realm at the moment before falling back with the Glade Riders. One really useful tip about having these guys, they can basically work as our archers in the back line once the battle does get going as well, which is always quite useful. We are getting early earth blood going down on the Knights of the Realm as well as the uh, peasants here and the spearmen. We're trying to reposition the sisters up in the sky to get a breath attack down the range on these archers. My opponent is consistently wheeling around, making it really hard to get good breath attacks, which is certainly big problems for me. Fane Challengers is leading the charge with the Paladins. Relatively uh, comfortable at the moment. They're very slippery and tanky. And it looks like she's just trying to bunch up my Eternal Guard to bring down a Chalice from the sky, which is just a bound Comet of Cassandora at the end of the day with a fancy name. We do manage to move out of the way of it though, and down it comes with the old smack doing relatively little damage there. And now we can re-engage once more with the Eternal Guard. We're going to use the mobility here of our Flyers to try to come in for a bit of an assassination attempt here on the enemy characters. And the reason we're trying to commit to this with so many knights nearby, which seems like a terrible decision, is so we can pop that Dwellers below. You can see the Spell Swing of Life is waiting patiently up in the sky and now my opponent has fallen back. One that Paladin did get slightly isolated. So we're going to turn to try and engage with the sisters and the Glade Captain to annihilate this Paladin if at all possible and uh, get him off the battlefield. He is currently terrified and running for his life. A big Earth Blood does come down. Lurk Tricksters doing a relatively solid job and they're an expensive unit. I don't really want to sacrifice a Dwellers Below on, but there is so many Knights swarming in. We have Knights of the Realm, Grail Knights. I feel like I have to pop a Dwellers right now. There is just too many juicy targets. Three cavalry forces in here is certainly worth, unfortunately, sacrificing the Loic Tricksters, who are down to about half health there, and some really beat up Eternal Guard. And in comes the Dwellers, doing some pretty solid damage across the board. Nothing too insane, but uh, actually nothing too insane though, is a little bit of an understatement. That spell goes on quite some time, does some massive damage there. But the Sister Twilight really struggling to get out of the danger zone there. In the front line, we've beaten back one unit of Knights of the Realm who are buffed up by Flesh to Stone. Elsewhere, Eternal Guard are really holding back the Infantry Tide, as well as the Beast Slayers of Baston, who uh, my opponent does have in the middle there. Really useful Regiment of Renown Foot Squires with that anti large. So it's going a little bit poorly at the moment. The Sisters are being forced back, but they do have the ability to heal up with that conjoined destiny if their HP gets a little bit too low and they can survive long enough. So I'm not too worried yet, not panicking too much. The Glade Riders are falling back, doing some nice damage to the Knights of the Realm. We're also chucking in Glade Riders for some reason, but very quickly going to be swooping them back out of the action. The Glade Captain up in the sky, just trying to focus down the Paladins as well as the Knights of the Realm with that long-range missile pressure. And now we're going to simply fall back and kite with these Glade Riders, looking to apply pressure to those speed units of my opponents, which is the Paladins and the Knights. If we can kite them, slowly drag them down, I'm certainly going to be a happy ducky indeed. And even the Sisters of Twilight also trying to rain fire down from above. The infantry fight's going pretty well for us all round. Some peasant archers have accidentally got mucked up here on some eternal guard, but the Beast of Baston are kind of been a big, big pain for me. They're a really solid mid-tier troop at the moment, and elsewhere the eternal guard are kind of winning all of their engagements, are holding back swathe of swathes of enemies. So uh, we are going to have to deal with these Beast Slayers, and to do that, we come in with the Beast. A big fat breath attack goes down the line, roasting the Beast Slayers, who are not having a good time whatsoever. Sister Twilight, you can see, have this lovely little glowy orb next to them, which means their conjoined destiny cooldown is currently on. They may be injured and weakened at the moment, but soon they will get a big, fat, juicy burst of HP. Another comet is coming in. The Eternal Guard are going to fall back, however, once again, it managed to avoid it. It's a pretty slow wind-up time. It is a really cool-looking animation when it explodes, but we managed to avoid it for the most part. However, Double Paladin and Fae are still being big problems, so we're going to use the Sisters to focus down that one Paladin. Unfortunately, the Glade Captain has now run out of ammunition. In the distance, you can see the Knights of the Realm, as well as uh, some more Knights of the Realm, are doing the rather thankless task of trying to drive away the Glade Riders. We have so much ammunition left, though a few have caught us. We're simply going to overwhelm them, and once again, kite back. Although we are getting pinned into this corner, we move a lot faster through the trees than normal cavalry. The fact we are, you know, wood elves. So Glade Riders should be able to swoop up and around here and escape the pursuers, and still rain decent rain damage on them from afar. 
Battle's becoming very stretched. We have a few units of Terminal Guard dotted around the battlefield at the moment, chasing down Peasant Bowmen as well as Julian Spearman Arms all around the battlefield. But there is still some Peasant Bowmen left alive with a bucket ton of ammunition. And that's going to be really bad news for us. Sisters are still focusing down that Paladin, looking to drag him down to his knees. He's down to just 40 HP, but still refusing to shatter in the name of Z Lady. He will stand and die. Down to 14 HP at the moment. One more shot is going to seal his fate, however. So we've at least got rid of one Paladin. Unfortunately, it was not the one with Guardian, so I probably should have focused down this one first. But, you know, we all make mistakes. Peasant Bowmans are currently uh, range shots down onto the Spelter of Life, or range shots upwards, I should say. We are going to be lining up a big fat breath attack. Once again, my opponent does a really good job of wheeling his troops, mitigating a lot of the damage that would have been dealt there by the big forest dragon up in the sky. But still, damage is damage at the end of the day. And now we're going to start swooping down with some of our eagles over onto this right hand side, running over the spearmen and peasant mobs. Freeing up and saving these Eternal Guard from their long enduring fights. They've done a good job holding that front line for a considerable amount of time. We are starting to run out of a, con a mo majority of our ammunition, I would say, at this point. Sisters are out. The Glade Captain is out. We still have some left on our cavalry. My opponent did give up the pursuit of our Glade Riders, but that's absolutely fine for me. We're just going to rear charge the Peasant Bowmen and the Beast Slayers now. Overwhelm them and break them as quickly as possible. We also have 62 Eternal Guard on that left-hand side, which is a really nice bastion of strength for us. We do pop down an Earth Blood, it would seem. Oh no, my opponent pops down an Earth Blood. We're going to be popping down a Dweller's Blow once more. Catching out the Knights of the Realm, the characters as well as the peasant mobs. And look how cool this animation is. I've been talking about it a lot in recent replays, I feel. But it really has come into its own in the meta once more. Doing some lovely damage there, forcing back their enemy who are currently slowed. So at this moment, I realised the uh, main fight, which was going on in the centre here, is completely lost. So we're actually going to float out to the left-hand side and try to rally with the 62 Eternal Guard, as well as our Glade Riders, who are currently being used to run down the Beast Slayers, and it looks like we have managed to shatter them indeed. So we're just falling back with our large single entities at the moment. So this is Twilight to do turn to use their uh, kind of Ariza Kurnos-esque ability, watered-down version, and uh, shoot some shots into the Palin just to try to make him a little bit weaker. There still are these pesky Wardens of Montfort. I think they fell back early on and were kind of forgotten about. So they've still got a load of ammunition, which could be rather scary. The Glade Riders at the moment are trying to focus down the Knights of the Realm, down to just uh, 590 HP at the moment. They're certainly starting to struggle. And we're just finishing off shattering and chasing down as many units as possible at the moment. But I thought, you know what? It's just some peasant mobs. It's just uh, some really beat up spearmen at arms. They're probably not going to be able to get back into the fight to make a difference. So we're going to start driving towards our enemy. But if you have a little look at the battlefield, we are vastly outnumbered at the moment. Which is really quite scary indeed. We do not have many troops left. We're really going to be relying on the power of the eagles. Now, eagles are pretty, you know, pretty useful in melee, but there is still the Fae Enchantress. There is a Paladin, and there is Knights of the Realm, who are currently receiving an overcast Earthblood, increasing their HP by 672. Not too shabby whatsoever. Likewise, the Wardens are quite scary indeed, so we're going to be moving in first with the Eternal Guard. They're going to be our anvil here today. Glade Riders trying to swoop around the outside, likewise is our big dragon, as I want to uh, try to hunt down those peasant archers in the back, Wardens of Montfort, and get some rear and flank attacks if at all possible. And I believe we still have one breath attack left on the sisters, and there is a big old fat unit of 83 spearmen here, who of course do have anti-large, so it could cause us some pretty big problems. A lot of the knights are beat up. So I'm hoping we'll be able to break them and uh, route them as quickly as possible. So we are going to use our last breath attack up on the Spimmin' Arms, roasting that unit, getting massive kills, and now we have to commit. Balance of Power is nearly dead even, almost 10 minutes into this game, and we're going to go for the assassination attempt, diving down onto the Fae Enchantress with all of the Eagles and the Sisters, and we are absolutely pummeling her from all sides, trying to kill the enemy leadership, just break her, and then maybe, just maybe, we're about to break the rest of the enemy's build. Earthblood does come in by our spell singer, who's also popped Opal Amulet, but the sisters are really starting to struggle now. Down just 550 HP, but we have managed to break and terrify the Fae Enchantress. The Paladin, though, still standing firm, and a big tear out goes down. And we are going to be able to get the Sister Twilight back up into the skies. And you can see their Conjoined Destiny works multiple times. But of course there is a healing cap. And they are going to be able to hit it today. Hunting down at the Fae Enchantress who is indeed broken. And the Bounce of Power swings massively. 
from the middle into our favor quite heavily. The sisters up to just 474 HP, not too good for them. The Enchantress is getting gobbled upon though by the Glade Captain and the sisters, but it's certainly not over yet. My opponent chucking everything at the walls right now. We have the Knights of the Realm charging headlong in with the Wardens after the sister of Twilight looking to break her and save the Fae Enchantress. He's actually going to swoop around to try and engage into combat. We pop an Earth Blood onto our Eternal Guard there to try and keep them fighting as the Spell Singer is going to disengage from that fight and once again pop over here to try to finish off the Fae Enchantress. And it looks like maybe we're doing it. Yes, we just about shatter her. What you can't kill, you can certainly break and make run away from you. And somehow, the Sister of Twilight survived that battle, despite being ridiculously low on HP in the end. You can't get a much closer game than that. A Pyrrhic victory. We still had the two Eagles rather healthy at the end, but everything else was just, just decimated on our side. And the Eagles, though they are pretty good on the charge, if they get surrounded by cavalry and paladins and stuff, really just do not last too long whatsoever. But very well played to my opponent. Um, I did check on Steam what your name was, but I have no idea how to even say it or pronounce it. So, Mr. Blank, you performed really quite well here today. And that was an insane game between two of the most hated lords, I feel like. Everyone hates Fae Enchantress, and I feel like quite a few people hate the Sisters of Twilight. And uh, I love them, though. I think they're actually a really cool inclusion to the game. I know they can be a bit obnoxious if you haven't prepared for them, but, you know, they're pretty good fun unit all round, getting over 200 kills as well. Well, exactly 200. Over 16,000 damage dealt, 2,747 damage value. Really cool, useful unit here coming in with those snipes in the later stages of the game. Now, of course, they've got to make a lot of damage value to get that uh, the gold back when you pit them on the dragon. But the ladies certainly performed really well today. Hope you guys did enjoy this battle. We will go through the damage dealt and damage value of all the units in just a second. But if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a big fat thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more glorious Total War Warhammer content into the future. We recently hit the 6,000 subscriber mark, which is so cool. Um, we had people make memes about it. We've got someone making some fan art as well, which I'm really excited to share with you guys. I will probably pop it up on the community section of the channel here today. But yeah, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Comment down below what you thought to the battle what do you think of this matchup as well because it is historically heavily Britannia favored I still think it's pretty you know pretty hard for the Wood Elves but it's a lot better than it ever has been before which is certainly good news and some good balance in there as well by Creative Assembly so yeah comment down below feel free to see a quack at me as well I do really enjoy reading all your comments and the support is often overwhelming and really lovely and nice so I do appreciate it there's a links down below in the description if you'd like to support the channel via Patreon or if you'd like to join my Discord where you can get involved with events and tournaments I host. We're actually doing one today. Uh, it might be a bit too late by the time this video's up to uh, join in, but you never know. So hop down below, join the Discord, get involved in all the glorious stuff that we do and do here on the channel. Once again, well played to my opponent, but let's go for the damage dealt and damage value. Once again, the Sister of Twilight, though, performing amazing. 2,747 damage value, 200 kills. Good work, but... By far the MVP for me was the Spell Singer of Life. 121 kills on what is historically known as a support caster. Over 14,000 damage dealt, 2,521 damage value. Those dwellers below, particularly the first one, was a very, very juicy in softening up the enemy cavalry to allow our eternal guard and single entities, particularly in the end game, just to simply overwhelm them. Glade Captain did manage to get a rather impressive 1,542 damage value herself, 5,572 damage dealt, 53 kills, and the uh, the trio, actually the quad, I should say, the quad crew, because there's double sisters there, performed really well. They uh, certainly did really good work for me here today. Eternal Guard, across the board, actually did pretty solid. 98 kills, 163 kills, 46, 78, and 2. 894 damage value on this first one, 507, 244, 622, and 403. Now, not the craziest damage value, but certainly not too shabby. But just being able to hold back just wave after wave after wave of peasants really does help out and allow my other more mobile elements to bounce around and really dish out the damage. Eternal Guard are up there, in my personal opinion, alongside Longbeards and Saurus Warriors are some of the best infantry in the game for that kind of mid, mid to kind of... Not, yeah, I suppose mid-tier infantry, I would say they are. They're not really low-tier infantry. Wood Elves don't really do low-tier in general. We do have Lurks Tricksters as well. The uh, Regiment Renowned War Dancers. They did okay. 855 damage value. Not too shabby, considering they got themselves in a real sticky situation. Managed to drag down a lot of the Knights, do good damage to the Palans as well, before, unfortunately, they were sacrificed to the Great Void from the Dwellers Below. Uh, kind of, you know, 
bringing them down, and I'm sure wood elves don't mind dying in a forest, because technically they're giving their life to Athaloran once more, but still, I really like this unit, I don't see enough people bring them, and they look badass as well, their flips, tricks, tattoos, and uh, kind of swinging the spears and all that cool stuff. Glade Rise with Hagbane Tips, just such a good skirmish cavalry unit. Nearly 800 damage value on this one with 50 kills. 926 damage value with 81 kills. 452 with 15 kills. So, so not bad whatsoever. Kiting the knights around and slowly picking them apart. Also coming in with those charges to break up some of the enemy units in the later stages of the game. Now the Fae, I uh, despise her. She's a pain in the butt <laughs> to try and deal with. Very slippery. Very good support character. But we've seen her get way more damage value than this before. So 1,233 damage value. One thing she does struggle against is those big, fast, hard-hitting single entities. She'll kill an infinite amount of Eternal Guard and so forth. When there's a dragon and eagles hunting you, it can be quite hard. But still 43 kills, over 6,000 damage dealt. Not too shabby whatsoever. The Paladins, the more and more I see replays, like, killing Paladins isn't as hard as you would think. Uh, 942 damage value is really impressive with 33 kills. The other one though, only 153. These guys, I believe, are not immune to psychology, so you can tear out them, pull them away from the Fae, and break them down. The reason they are so good is simply the fact that they can be healed up, I think. Peasant mobs across the front line. Uh, I mean, one unit got 10 kills against elves. That's pretty impressive by this uh, little unit of peasant mobs. They must have been finding some eternal guard in the rear or something for a while. But they did their duty for the Lady and Bretonia. They died, and that's uh, what peasants are for. The uh, Spimmer at Arms did uh, you know, 195, nothing too crazy there. Only 300 damage value on the Beast Slaves, which is really unfortunate. They kind of got bogged down by Eternal Guard, and then just a fiery breath from the sky, just bam, snapping them out of existence as they uh, bubbled to small sludges on the ground. Not a good way to go, but, you know, that's what you kind of uh, expect when you sign up to be a Foot Squire in the Warhammer universe. Peasant Bowman. 2,256 damage value. This wants to make... I want to vomit. I want to vomit after watching this. Jesus. 2,256. I know they were hitting the sisters quite a bit as well as the other air cores, but I didn't think it was that much damage value. Well played to keeping the peasants online as long as he did. My opponent had really good... Um, micromanagement where every time he knew I was trying to line up a breath attack he would just wheel the unit around so I couldn't do as much damage the other peasant bowman 800 damage value that is an amazing work there by the peasants trying to carry the day but how did the knights fare well knights around 83 kills 850 damage value 23 kills, 590 damage value, 29 kills but only 387 damage value. This unit performing a bit better, 61 kills, 1.2k damage value. And unfortunately the Grail Knight's not doing too great. Only 10 kills and 893 damage value. The Dwellers Below really did neuter the Knights of the Realm. But likewise our build's pretty good up against Cavalry. Almost, all, well the entire ground force is indeed anti-large. And then you've got Glade Riders you can't catch and single entities. Which if you box up on, you're going to get hit by Dwellers Below. The Wardens did uh, pretty solid work as well themselves, over a thousand damage value and 16 kills being used quite effectively in the later stages of the battle by my opponent. So the combination there of the, uh, the range kind of did really good, but the characters and the infantry fared pretty weakly and the cavalry was a bit of a mixed bag. Nonetheless, it was a super close, fun game. Well played to my opponent. I've been really enjoying the Wood Elves recently. Massive shout out to both Park Map and Loopy. They've recently inspired me to play them again. I get these weird moments where I watch someone play. Like, I watch Gron Brindle play, and then I'll go and play, like, a load of Dwarf games. Or I'll watch, uh, like, a Park Map or a Loopy or a Dactor or a Ronin play Wood Elves, and I'll, I'll go play a load of Wood Elf games. I've uh, recently been bouncing around between Skaven as well. So, so many fun factions. I can't really stick with one apart from my Lizardmen. Bounce around quite a bit and I've been enjoying the game real loads since the latest patch actually. I've really been enjoying the uh, changes to match and all that good stuff. But anyway guys, until next time, enough of me rambling. Peace, peace, and as always, stay awesome.